Some of you know him as the executive director of the Writers Guild of America. And our trophy handler knows him as Dad. Here's Lowell Peterson. I am going to try to make this work. Let's bring your nails down in the dirt. Cause she means hey, hey, yes, wow. Who knew that radio news could be so funny? Well, we got some Writers Guild in the house. All right, I used that same rallying cry just a few weeks ago at the Huffington Post when we were talking about our new contract there. We have brought in 500 new members writing in digital news in one year. They join our brothers and sisters in broadcast news on the front lines of the struggle for independent journalism, the fight to preserve the right to speak truth to power without fear of retribution. But we've also heard from our TV uh, uh, scripted and our, our uh, screenwriter members about the challenges posed by this strange new world. They wonder if they're going to remain able to tell stories and to create characters that challenge the powerful and the insecure. I believe you know who we're talking about. I believe the best way for us to persist, for us to resist, is to build an even stronger union. This is the foundation on which to build power for the people who tell this country's stories. Y'all. Yeah. And we need to extend our bargaining success, successes of the last year to our upcoming negotiations with the networks and the major studios to translate the enormous profits of the entertainment industry into meaningful gains for writers. Now, more than ever, we must deepen our commitment to each other to strengthen our community of creative professionals. It's time for us to think outside the box. It's time for us to act outside the box. First, before I get back to the awards, I'd like to do a little shout out to my daughter Kirsten, our trophy person. The next two awards were designed to propel the careers of outstanding future members in news and entertainment. It's our hope that both the work and the values of these honorees will serve them and our guild. First, the John Merriman Award was named posthumously for our esteemed former guild president and renowned newsman who epitomized the pillar of the fourth estate that is investigative journalism. To honor his example, the Merriman is awarded to a student at American University where he was on the faculty. This year's recipient is Jordan Houston, who's earning her master's in with a specialization in broadcast news. She's an intern at the Washington Post, and in December she earned a byline as a contributing reporter for a front page investigative news story on, the, on imitation firearms that result in deadly encounters with police, an extraordinarily important topic. It was written by Pulitzer Prize winner John Sullivan. She'll receive a $1,000 stipend as part of this award. The Michael Collier Memorial Fellowship, underwritten by the King Family Foundation, is awarded to a student pursuing a career in screenwriting. Michael's widow, Susan Collier, joins us in the audience tonight. This year, the Collier Fellowship collaborated with The Blacklist to expand the reach of our applicant pool from 19 partner schools to a nationwide call for undergraduate writers. The first honoree to come from this partnership is Joe Walters, a student of radiologic techno technology at Gwinnett Technical College in Atlanta, who works as an EMT in the emergency room. He'll use his $10,000 award from the Collier Foundation to develop his screenplay, Hazard, which imagines the next uh, generation of the iconic Duke family. And his mentor will be our own Susanna Styron. Jordan and Joe, please stand so that we can recognize both of you. May this, may this uh, moment inspire you, and may your work continue to inspire us from now on. Thank you very much.